Warning, this video may show graphic scenes of old wore out tools and outdated equipment just like myself, but we get the job done. Alright guys, today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how I'm building my closet shelves for our new home here that we just recently started building or, or finished building. Now we're going to start out with using some uh, actually top choice, uh, let's get a picture of it here, top choice blonde wood primed. It's three quarter inch thick. One side will be primed, the other side will not be as you can see in the picture here. Uh, these shelves are going to be eight foot tall, uh, 16 inches deep. And 32 inches wide and if you take uh, the plywood to use it and get the most you can out of each sheet if you take that 16 you'll be able to cut three uprights going that way and then if you take the 16 running from this end to the other end you'll also get three three sheets or three slices you get one here you get one here and you get one here so actually you use every bit of the sheet if you make your shelves, shelves the same size that I'm making size that I'm making these. Now I cut one piece this wide. This is my jig. I'm using it to cut all the uprights, which is a total of eight feet long from one end to the other end. Excuse all the junk we're having to do this inside the warehouse here, which my wife saw over my butt because I got sawdust everywhere. But there from there to the top. Is actually eight eight feet. Now, in between are going to be the 32 inch shelves themselves. I don't have any wasted wood that way. So back to what I was saying, I'll cut me cut me one 16 inches by eight foot, and then I'll cut me two more, one here, and then one over there. Keep in mind that you might want to always keep the prime side up. It doesn't make us any difference. We're going to put a yellow paint, kind of a yellowish. Uh, milky I don't know what you'd call it dark dark yellow color on it so that paint's gonna actually be the same no matter what side I put it on stay tuned I'll start cutting the smaller pieces and then I'll start putting the shelf together and show you how we're doing it now I don't have a sawmill I mean a sawmill boy there we go we got some sawmill videos out there I just jumped to that topic real quick didn't I we don't have a table saw capable of cutting this big stuff, especially doing it by myself. So we'll have to make do with a, like a two by four, use as a guide, mark, mark the settings and then cut it from that point on. Okay, as you can see, I've taken the first piece that I've used as a template and I've set it up on the sheet that I'm gonna be cutting and I've marked it and I've allowed the distance. Yeah, let's see if we can get this old camera to sit still down here sorry about this guys I'm trying to do this by myself and uh, trying to get y'all the best picture I possibly can my saw itself is one and a half inches from the blade tip to here so you want to allow that between here and here once you set that in there this saw will run right along that that line that I have scribed there now let's see how it cuts out it's very hard to do this by yourself Really need two people to support it. Need better stands. Uh, I'm having to do what I can with what I have currently. It's about 29 degrees outside. The sun finally came out after about four days. So we're going to have to work this inside the shop here. In a crowded space, junked up space. It's full of crap that we uh, need to get moved to the other warehouse. But uh, these are only options we have right now. So let's try to make this work. Another good thing, always make sure you got plenty of cord when you're running the saw. Uh, mine hung up there.
Guess what I thought it all had had it all set up right? Hey, hey you all see, saw what happened. So learn from my mistakes on this one, guys. Didn't damage anything. Didn't hurt the wood. But uh, that's what can happen. Uh, had a dog or somebody been underneath there, that could have been pretty bad. But anyhow, we got it cut. That's the main thing. Now I believe, even at my old age, that my freehand skills to cut a small cut like this is possible. You know, if you don't feel like you can hold it down when you need to anchor it, uh, you really need to be wearing something for breathing and safety glasses, which I do have on. But I'm going to try to freehand this thing myself. That is going to be the piece that's going to be used for the shelving. You'll cut as many of these as you want that will go in between the uprights. Well, we made it to the next phase of the build. We've actually got everything cut and now we're starting to assemble the pieces together. Now we did come up six inches from the bottom of the floor on the bottom section of it. And we put the pieces that are 32 inches in the middle at the top and at the bottom. And then we're going to add shells as we go along. Oh, you don't need to be in the video. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. You need to be quiet. These are one of my five shelter dogs. My wife and I love animals. And there, there's another one over there called Roscoe. You no, know, we spared their lives. Uh, they treat us better than most humans do. So they're very important to us. But anyhow, before we was interrupted by the black mutt here, Miss Ebony, we uh, are going to continue putting the center you know shelves themselves into in the uprights all right i bet you're wondering what i did was i created me a, a little board here that i will put in between each shelf as i go along well that's the wrong one there that's for the next shelf but anyhow I just cut me a board here so i can lay it in between these each shelf to actually have them exact i'll move this to, from the top down to the bottom then i'll go to this side over here do the same thing so the shelves will be exactly the same height now I went with the 14 inch here I may go with the 12 here I may go with the 18 on the next one so you can get your shelf set exactly the way you want them just cut your little board use a spacer let me also mention that this blonde wood is uh, quite expensive especially in our neck of the woods out here in southeast Texas uh, a sheet of this stuff is right around $50 currently at today's prices now you may find it different at the Home Depot. I bought this at Lowe's because uh, it's the closest store, which is 48 miles from us. But uh, you might kind of reach out to different sources. Maybe you can find a better pricing on this stuff, and it may go up in the future. But uh, before anybody asks, I figured I'd put that in the, in the video that this is blonde wood. It's uh, three-quarter inch thick, and it's right at $50 here at our Lowe's.com. Our Lowe's, Lowe's store here in the Livingston area, not Lowe's.com, but... Yeah, you can check prices there, I'm sure. But again, 50 bucks a sheet is what we paid for it. Something else I might mention is I like to use a little brad nailer at the beginning to kind of put all the boards in place. That way, if you have to take them out or you want to change your design or the, the height and the depth of the shelves, it's very easy to do it. You know, I'll just put two or three of these little brad nails in there. Oh, uh, let me see if i got a picture of them. They're not very big. But they actually just hold it together in place, makes it easier to assemble and put the screws in. And some people may want to use a, a Craig's jig kit, which is a great little tool. I've got a little small one. It's not very big, but uh, it's an old Chinese one. I paid something like $29 for it. Now, I just don't think you can beat the original. This one is pretty accurate. Again, this is a Chinese or import Craig's jig tool. And I have used it, and I may use it on this project. I kind of like drilling in from the side. Uh, you know, taking a kind of countersinking the heads like I'll show you in this picture over here. And just putting the screws in. Because you're not going to see them later on. They're going to be in a closet. But kind of countersinking that hole. 
and using those uh, correct screws. I know something about the correct screws, man. That's a very good screw. I don't know what type of steel they're using. I don't know the design or what, but uh, especially with that number two head, that driver, they're very easy to put in. And it's, I just really like those screws for some reason or another compared to any other screws doing this type of work. Okay, we made it to the stage where we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shelves in there. Now we're going to start making the back supports that go on the wall that holds it in place. And we're going to go ahead and put some kind of a face trim across the, the front of the thing here. Now we haven't bought anything and we're not going to put that sticky glue on crap on it. We're just going to take some 2 by 4s and make it some thin little slices and put them on just like you see we did on this one over here. Keep in mind that, you know, this is not a professional built cabinet or closet shelf or whatever you want to call it. But I just took some old fur 2 by 4s and I just put them on the old wore out sawmill. I say sawmill. Man, I'm stuck with a sawmill because that's all I do all the time. Work with the sawmill. But I put them on a table saw, which I got as no vintage table saw. And it's uh, not the most accurate in the world. But you know, like I said, sometimes we make do with what we got. We got an old firestorm that we've had for six, seven, eight years. And believe it or not, that old firestorm by Black and Decker still cuts pretty dad burn good. Now, it ain't a high speed commercial saw by any means or grade and fashion but you know it'll get you get you home to where you can visit with mama at the end right okay well we're going to continue with this thing and like I said we screwed all the ends in you can see the screw holes which you're going to have those we didn't use the Craig's jig tool we just decided to go that route kind of wanted to go over uh, you know what what we're actually using to uh, fasten the wood together now I mentioned Craig many times in this video. I'm not endorsed or paid by them to put this video out, but I do like several things about it. I really like the screws. I like the containers. Uh, I like the quality. It is a very good product. You might pay a little more, but in some cases I found that actually these screws are not more any more expensive than any of these fasten tight screws that you see here. Now we did use a few of these in some of our projects and they've done a pretty good job for us. What you will need, keep in mind that when you buy any of these screws, it's either going to be a Phillips head, uh, maybe a, just a flat screwdriver head, it's, they vary. Uh, with the Craig's pocket hole screws, you're definitely going to need a number two driver. And this is an extended driver. It's three and a half inches. It helps you get in tight spots uh, so your drill doesn't hit, hit anything. It makes it easy to put the screws in. You can use a shorter one if needed. But again, the Craig's pocket hose screws are just my go-to man I just like them and like I said I'll go back I like the containers they're easy to store they're stackable uh, let's see here see how they stack up real nice and neat they stack up real nice and neat man it's pretty cool I think now grip right you can use drywall screws if you want to they're not recommended it's always good to use a fast and tight trim screw we're using a six and by one and five eighths and sometimes we use a 6 by one and 5 8 fast and tight drywall screw. Not as strong as the other ones, but you can get the job done. Sometimes you got to make do with what you have, just like we're doing out here. We're too far from town to run in and get any other screw, so we're going to make do with what we have. Well, what I did here was I took an old 2 by 4 old yellow pine, and I set my saw to rip me some smaller pieces come out like this right here. Just something to kind of put a face on the front of the, the shells themselves. Now of course if I was doing something like a something entertainment center in the kitchen or living room area or dining room wherever I might be putting this entertainment system I'd definitely go out and buy some really better quality wood to do this but I don't think you're gonna come and look in my closet to see what I got in there. So but we'll, it'll look pretty nice at the end. Now at this stage of the video, we've already got our trim pieces, our face pieces cut. And they're just enough to kind of overlap. And what we'll do is we'll take a little, uh, what we have here is an old Banks uh, Bradnator that we bought from, I think, Harbor Freight. For something like $25, $30. 30 bucks. It does a really good job too, actually, for a tool. You flush up the side, run your little brad in there. And 
you'll continue. You'll also, you know, run you a few pieces across here, across here, across all the all the face of the, the actual shelf itself. Like I said, we did that by uh, actually. Let me see if I can get my camera loose here. Oh, oh, oh. Trying to make too much of a disturbed area there. But yeah, we'll do the whole cabinet that way uh, with the homemade face plates or face pieces. Okay, now we've got all the shelves in, we've got all the face covers in, the plates, covers, whatever you want to call them. The trim pieces. I've got that board up on the top up there to mount it to the wall. And I got another one down here right there. Now what we're going to do is do a little sanding on it. And uh, well, of course, Ebony, she got to get the picture. She got to put her ball up there. She's going nuts. She's ready for me to throw that ball again. But anyhow, that's where we're at, folks. So let's uh, get the sander on this thing and see if we make it look a little prettier. And then we'll start shooting some paint on it. Or shooting paint. Let's see. We're going to probably brush it. Well, I finally got the paint on it. It's kind of like a mustard yellow. But that's what the final shelf looked like after uh, all the previous stuff we showed you in the video there. Not bad for old timer that's never built one in his life. Well guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope you like it enough to hit the subscribe button. Just another day out here in the woods in southeast Texas. Thank you for watching.